Welcome to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Are you trying to master the game of life without success? There are secrets and strategies to living your best life. We'll share some of them with you on today's show. Take advantage of this series to become an expert at relationships. All relationships. It's time to live the life that you deserve to live. Now, here's your host, Sandra Reich. And welcome to Straight Talk with Sandra Reese, a show that talks about living your very best life. Um, first and foremost, if you want to join in in the conversation today, and it's going to be a, a meaty one, um, feel free to call in at 1-866-472-5792. Again, 1-866-472-5792. Uh, before I get rolling and introduce my fabulous guest, um, I'm just back from a really extraordinary experience with 22 of the most courageous courageous people I've ever met. I do couple retreats, as many of you know, and I was in um, a beautiful area called Mont Tremblant, just out of just outside of Montreal, uh, with um, 11 couples, 22 people, uh, who came in and trusted me, which is incredibly uh, humbling and kind, um, to, and courageously wanted to work on their marriage. Because, you know, we start out a marriage and we don't get a rule book, at least if we do, I didn't get my copy. And now we know that there is, we're so lucky, there is a science to love. And if you apply the science, it's quite magical what what happens. And I, I just want to start the show as a, with a shout out to, I know many of them are listening, to those courageous couples and the work that they did. I was floored by them. And it takes a lot to get me floored these days. I've, you know, I've done a lot of retreats and a lot of things. My guest is nodding. Um, but the courage and the intimacy and the uh, honesty that was in the room, if, if you were there, you know what I'm talking about. And if you weren't there and you want to learn more about how to work on your couple, um, you know, always look into retreats, whether it's mine or someone else's, because there is so much information out there that can make such a profound difference in your life. You can go to our website, uh, helpforanxietydepression.com or holidaycoupleretreats.com to find out more. And I just want to thank the amazing couples I got to spend time with. I'm looking forward to continuing this journey in Mexico in November. Okay, so my guest today, she came to me and she said, in the middle of the night one night, um, she's a good friend, uh, incredible therapist. You've heard her on Straight Talk many times before. It's the amazing Georgia Dow. Uh, Let me just give the background here. In the middle of the night one night, I woke up and we're so close that we wake up even at the same time, (laughs) kind of strange. And there was a text from her and how thoughtful she is that she was thinking of my radio show in the middle of the night, just says so much about her. And she said, you know, Sandra, I just think we need to do a show on um, bad news. Bad news. What happens if you get bad news? What happens if you get diagnosis? What happens if someone dies in your life? And what I could say without getting too personal is that both Georgia and I have faced, um, you know, deaths and difficulties in our lives this year and how courageous that she wanted to come on and talk about that and have us talk about it to help others who go through these difficult situations. So first of all, uh, thank you so much, Georgia, for being so thoughtful and thinking again outside of your own pain Uh, to bring this topic and joining me here today on Straight Talk. Thanks so much. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, like, it's it's really interesting because, um, so my, for for me, I'll I'll just say where it all came from is uh, that my father passed away and I was just thinking about it. It's that, you know, often we don't have a really great set of how do we speak to people? How do we deal with things? When someone has, you know, something that's bad happened in their life, we we're not really taught how do we deal with that. And I found that a lot of people that were around me, you know, kind of stammered and, oh, and I don't, and I wish, and I, and it it was this discomfort that was kind of around it. And they didn't know what is a template? How do you deal with someone that, that it might be going through something, might be going through a difficulty or a breakup or, um, you know, has lost someone or has lost their job. And how do you speak to them about that? How do you, you know, you want to show empathy, but you also don't want to overdo it. And so I thought that it would be an interesting topic to help others with what, what do you do in these cases? How do you support? How do you help? How do you cope with? And 
everyone's different, so there's not going to be one rule to all, but I think that opening up the discussion is a really important discussion to have. Well, that's a great opening, actually, because um, I, have, I have some things I want to say about that. So, you know, ironically, our fathers died very close together in yes. time. Uh, you know, we're good friends. and it's, When you said before, like, we even wake up at the same time. Yeah, yeah we really have been going yeah. through very similar life things. It's, it's actually remarkable. Yeah. And I think our dads died something like eight or nine weeks apart. Yes. Um, yes. And both of them were, it was not sudden. We both no. knew this was coming. But I love where you started the show, and I want to run with that because I remember in therapy school having to take a course called On uh, Death and Dying. Yeah. And it made a very big impact on me because in the course they said things like exactly like what you just said, that people are really uncomfortable. They use euphemisms. They can't even say he died. They say yes. he passed. Yes. And although that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that, is our discomfort with death is so huge. And it's quite isolating for the person who's lost someone. And I, you know, unfortunately, I've lost both my parents. I remember when my mom died uh, back in 1994, um, I faced a lot of what you're talking about. And I learned from being in that experience that actually, and the course taught me this, that research shows, and I, you know, we like to go research. You're right. There are exceptions to the research. But research shows that people actually appreciate you saying something about the deceased person Mm -hmm. or talking about how it feels and what we do instead is we're so we think we're caretaking so we say we're not going to bring up your feelings or talk about your father because that will make Georgia uneasy but actually that's almost erasing your father so I know when we get together uh, we still talk last night we were talking about your father yeah and I you know I, I we talk about my about father your dad yeah too. we talked about it's my it. dad yeah. and I really welcome that and so I find it still to this day and I'll hand it back to you that when I say someone says like how old's your mother I say my mother's not alive anymore and they go oh I'm sorry, and they change the topic. I find it almost a bit disappointing. I'm yes. not mad at them, but wouldn't it be nice if they said, what was she like? Yes. You know? Yes. And that keeps the memory alive. And the research shows that's what you're actually, quote, unquote, supposed to do. Yeah. I, I think that that's a really important point of that feeling like they've now been erased. Yeah. That, I, and I, I think that people do it out of that discomfort. They don't yeah. want to make you feel sad. That's they right. They don't might want you to cry, which, like, if you're at work, or you're having to do something, then that me- there's also a time and place of for course. everything. But you don't want to feel like this person that mattered so much to you is now erased yeah. from your life. And it's interesting because you get a lot of time and attention when it first happens. But then there's also anniversaries and holidays. Mother's and- Day, Father's oh, Day. Yeah. Like yeah. I have a friend every Mother's Day um, always writes to me and says, I know this is a hard day for you. It's oh, very, thoughtful. So it's very, very th- thoughtful. It's very thoughtful. It's very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. Because Mother's Day is a bittersweet day for me. And, you know, Father's Day... Well, it's going to be. It's definitely yeah, going to be. For both of us. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The, our first, oh, I didn't even it's think about our, our first Father's Day without our father. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you see, like, even we're on the radio conversing about that, looking at our faces, and we're not we're not looking away and I I wish you could see us right now because the typical and as therapists we want to get across the typical thing is to look away and go oh my god this is hard for you and just change the subject and I think we it's a topic we're talking about so what should someone do on Father's Day when they've lost a parent you know what do they do you know and what do you do if you want to be comforting to somebody on Father's Day well I think that it's very interesting because um, if I may share a little bit about us so we also mourn very differently right right but we the the wonderful thing is that for 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 us we knew that there was like you know both of our our fathers were relatively ill and so we kind of knew um but i we had spoken about what do you want me to do how do you want me to comfort you which is so beautiful right yeah um that that we you said you know like you like to have to be spoken about to be there and i had said well i i want to be in the cave i'm kind of a person that wants to be i don't want to answer phones because for me that's energy and i just want to be in my cave but we had spoken about that that's right before right so when i didn't answer your call you know or didn't like you know what i didn't i didn't even call you i texted you because you had warned me you see but that's so nice but we had that talk these uncomfortable talks yeah that people want to avoid because i think that people are uncomfortable dealing with very strong emotions from others. They don't know how to carry those. Yeah. So they, they kind of avoid them and, and pretend that they're going to go away, but they yeah. don't. And so that was very nice, I think, on both of our parts, because I knew what you wanted and you know what I wanted. And so we could do that for each other. And, you know, I, I thank you. And I think that's such a good strategy is so let's let's compartmentalize that is strategy one. If yeah. someone has mm-hmm. someone dying and you have yes. the gift of time to ask them, 
when the day comes, what yes. would you want from me? Yes. Great strategy. Yeah. And even to say, what when you're in distress, how do you want, do you like to be comfortable? Right. Right? Because it's, we know. And so, you know, like, okay, just leave George alone for a period and she'll reach out when she needs. Yeah. And, and the opposite to that, ask and deal with. And yeah. so we were able to do that for each other. These talks are so important, and I don't think that they happen. I don't either. And I, you know, I, I'll go one step further is without the talk, you know, my mom taught me that there are two things in life you can't make up, a wedding and a funeral. Okay. And it's such a great advice that she gave me. It's funny, you know, my, my mother didn't live to see me become a therapist, and I use her advice regularly in mm. therapy because I tell people like people say to me I don't want to go to a funeral nobody wants to go to a funeral <laughs> yes. okay but so you, that question I'm tying it into your question is extremely important because um, I very much was you know again if there's a funeral and it's you know you don't want to go to a funeral of course but to not go to the funeral or the visitation and pay your respects to someone you can't make that up yeah. you cannot make up that so you know you have to find out what's going on and find your way because most people do have a funeral or a visitation and you got to figure out what you're going to do because paying your respects is important. But again, how you pay your respects is also important. And I think, again, because of the discomfort, some people show up to a visitation and they start talking about baseball and stuff, and that can actually feel quite disrespectful. You want to be able, you want to follow the lead of the person oh, in mourning. Oh, I love that. And and that could go even for the language that they use, for the manner in which they deal with it. And I love that. So if the person says, tries to change the subject. Yes, then, then go with it. Then you go with it. Yes. If they, they seem to want to speak about it, then go with it. That's right. Yeah, that's I love right. That. That's a great tip. Yeah. That's a great tip. Follow yeah, the lead really, of those that are in distress. That's right. You show up at the visitation and you fall into the very somber house. You know, you don't need to but speak. if they make a joke, then go, go with, with that. that. If they don't, I love that. And remember, just being there is comforting. Oh, I I love that. I think that we need to speak about that too, that sometimes you don't have to say that perfect thing. No. Oh, so good. No. So good. No. So to review so far, you know, before we go to the break, to review so far, check in with close friends what they would need in times of distress, ask questions. Because try in distress, it's yeah, too late. Yeah. yeah. Try to avoid Sorry. euphemisms. Yeah. Okay. Try to say, you know, say yeah. things as Unless they are. Unless they use the euphemism, yeah. they then use you can. Those. Perfect. And if you can share a story, I still think that's the greatest gift you can give someone. If yes. you can share Share a story. If I told you on Father's Day next week a story about an experience I had with your father that you didn't know about, that'd be so meaningful to you. And for me, if someone can share a story with me, that's so meaningful for me. Follow the lead of the person in mourning if you're visiting to them. If they want to joke around, great. If they're sitting there somberly, just being there is comforting for them. You're doing a great thing. And we will be right back with Straight Talk with Sandra Risha. We're going to talk about other difficult situations. We'll be right back. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health and Wellness. Spa Munari is a full service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. 
Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety, featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. A fresh look at today's health. Voice America Health and Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. Okay, we are back. Lots to talk about, but not going forward without thanking our amazing sponsor, Spa Maneri. Now, Spa Maneri is an amazing spa here in Montreal. So if you're in the Montreal core, you definitely want to call this number 514-695-5040. Talk about something you can do nice for someone in a difficult that time is, is book a massage, get a facial. And by the way, Spa Maneri believes so much in people living their best life, and that's why they sponsor this show, that if you call 695-5040 and say, Say straight talk with Sandra Reese. Do you know you'll get 15% off on any treatment there? That's a great gift. Isn't that something you can give gift. someone when they've gone through a hard time? So we're going to come back on that because we we're talking on the commercial break. Like there's different religions and different typical things that people would do. We're not going to touch that because, it, you know, all, all styles are good. But we were talking about the difference of sending flowers or sending a food plate um, and how flowers, although beautiful and typical in many religions, may not be as useful as sending someone food during this difficult time because during a difficult time, it is not great to have to cook. No, and you don't have the energy and you don't have the time to that. And it might it, be more practical. It may be more practical. And uh, again, I, I was kind of being the story of eventually my home kind of looked like a funeral home itself. And it was a little, it was constant reminder to that. Um, and, and so again, everyone is to their own feeling to that. But having some food that there is really nice, um, you know, a card. Or even saying, I'll, I'll take your kids if you want for a That's little bit. That's a nice thing a break, to say. Right? Just if you need a break, here I am. And the problem is, is that people often ask, what do you want me to do? And I think that that's too far of an open-ended Wait. question yeah, because very good. I barely know about me right now. So I think that taking the lead and just bringing some food or saying, I'd like to take the kids from this time would be okay. Like, take the lead or... Or if you know the person really well, say like, you know, I'm going to do the laundry this week and just, or just go into the house and just, if they don't like, some people would really hate this. So you have to know the person that you're with. Some people have very particular ways of doing things. And so you want to respect that or vacuuming the house or cleaning up an area and, you know, getting things done for that. It's, it's that thing so that you don't have to. What are some other things that would be well, enjoyable? Well, first of all, I love what you said is that I, I, I'm not a fan of vague things. I mean, the show's called Straight Talk with Sandra Reese for a reason. And right. saying, um, you know, how can I help you or what can I, not even how can, what can I do to help? But to me is another euphemism. It's, it doesn't mm. mean all that much. So I, and everyone's going to say no. Yeah, no one's right. Say so I like, um, I like asking specifically or offering something specifically. I like the concept of thoughtfulness. So um, I think... I think that both of us shine pretty good here. I can think of two examples of that we both did uh, for each other. I think we're meaningful. So um, I know for myself, and I, I, of course, we give the gift we want to receive. So I, I wanted you to know the kind of daughter you were to your father. Yeah. And I think you wrote to me that that was very meaningful to you. I wanted you to know how 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 much you've been there for him. Now, you know, what was that like for you? Like. I cried. I, I'm a crier. That is my thing. But it was it, it was just, um, it's nice to kind of look back and, and bring meaning to something that's sad and, and think about the happiness and the memories that you get to keep to that because we carry everyone with us. I remember saying he lives inside of you. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then you did something really thoughtful for me also. Do you remember what it is? I do. Oh, she's going to get crying. all yeah, I'm going to get all emotional. But it I was, won't be able to understand. again, our next strategy is be thoughtful. So, yes, I gave the example of what I did for you. You can give the example of what you did for me. So, um, I sneakily took a picture of um, 
your, your dad and mom. Yeah. And I colorized it and then sent it back to you. Yeah. And you can imagine what that meant to me. It was just an incredibly thoughtful gesture. And I think that, you know, with our father's death so closely apart, I think that and the fact that we're therapists, so we yeah. you know, have a little leg up on this, but we're really able to care for each other in in thoughtful ways that yeah. were meaningful to each other. Well, it's it was also something so nice and bonding. We we were lucky that we went through it very like at very similar times. Even all of the process was very similar to that. So that was really um, lovely. Like out of negative events that can happen we get to be there for each other and that's very bonding so this is also a moment you want to think about that this is an opportunity to be able to bond with the people that you care about and you may not know what to say uh you may not know what to do but just to be there and i think that you said that beautifully that just you don't, be there just be there. Yeah. there there's no real words yeah. right like it's it's when horrible things happen there, there are no words, really. And you don't yeah. have to find. People are after, like, waiting to try to find the perfect thing or the perfect And then they avoid this. And then they just don't do anything. Then they feel awkward. Yeah, 100%. I think that, um, I think the mistake where things can go wrong is people feel awkward and avoid. And um, I'm sure you'll agree that you don't f- ever forget who was there for you during yes. these times. This is where my mother, um, her advice was very, very good, is you can't make these things up. You can't just avoid i remember meeting people in my life who told me i've heard it many times i don't do funerals they're too upsetting to me i think that's a cop-out if i'm going to be straight talker i think it's a complete cop-out nobody wants to do a funeral and you know that that um that moment when you're going through this it's 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 very hard to carry sometimes and just to have other people there makes you feel supported and cared about and feel that feeling of love that you're not going through this alone. And you often feel so alone when you're going through something that's very difficult for you. You know, it does bring up also that you really did bring up a hot topic because, you know, both our fathers had a, like a slow demise, Mm -hmm. uh, somewhat slow. And um, I want to put out there for our listeners also a tip on if you are dealing with an ailing parent of something that was really helpful for me with both my parents is that you know when you get a diagnosis or it's not looking good is you know what do you do what do you do because they they start the process and it can be quite slow and even frustrating where you're almost like really like you know what do I do with this Um, for me there are a lot of things about our parents that we don't know and so that period when you find out that they could be in trouble it's a really good time to find out things you didn't know about. Where do they live? What did they eat as a child? And there's actually books that you can buy on Amazon filled with questions. And I did like something like, I don't know, 22 hours with my mother. And even when she was in and out, for to talk about her past, she'd come right back in because people like to talk about themselves. And so I have her whole history documented. So and beautiful. a lot of what I know about my parents is from these moments, you yes. know, is getting to like, what kind of soup did they eat as a kid? What was their address? Yes. You know, my parents are European. Where did they live? live like one lived in the country one lived in the city yeah so taking that time i love that. you know with the person who's not well and to find out more about them and um you could also video or audio yes that if you're not into writing um because also what about your children and their children and right have this it's a little, legacy this little pieces to that i i did i videotape i actually asked my dad questions and i uh taped them fantastic so that i have little bits of, Beautiful. of stories and things that he said and the way that he says it um, which is is just kind of a nice thing if you can, and and sometimes things happen quickly and you can't and you carry that with you. But then you can just write down your memories and thoughts. And uh, w- you had said also something that was a, a beautiful thing to do for someone that might have lost someone, which would be to write down a funny story or story that they may not know or tell it to them. But it's sometimes nice to even have it written down because it might be difficult. That helped me the most is that uh, we would talk um, after the uh, death of my father about, you know, funny things he did. And I think that also, um, I, I, maybe people will disagree with this, but I think that the concept of canonizing someone, meaning only talking about the good things they did, misses sometimes part mm-hmm. of the healing process of grief because people are complex. There's always the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think that in our society where, you know, once someone dies, we have the idea we can only say good things about them. Right. And I think that also is a new pressure because what if they weren't always a good mother or a good father or good whoever. And I think I'm a b- big believer in the whole picture. Like you don't have to walk around like spitting venom, but you can still tease about, you know, remember how dad used to criticize us or remember how dad would say something to you or whatever. You know, I think that 
again, this pressure that after someone dies, they become a saint. Yeah. Leads into our world of therapy where we see something called complicated grief. What is complicated grief, Georgia? Well, it, you know, we deal we deal a lot with that feeling of what happens when, you know, you can't actually do the process of grieving yeah. because you have a lot of hurt or pain. And we deal a lot with people that may have had a parent. They can't heal it really because... They can't talk to them about it, and they're very hurt by something that happened, yet they also love them and they feel bad to it. So you end up with this anger, and you have this feeling of sadness to it, and you it's hard to kind of go through. What do you do when someone comes to you, and they're kind of blocked to that, and they're dealing with this? Well, I, you know, I really do explain that grief that's not dealt with will turn into a minimum an anxiety or depression problem. So, you know, even with a patient or a client, I'm going to have them bring pictures of their parents or picture of the person they lost. Mm. We're going to get into the pain. We're going to get into the pain and we're going to introduce the concept of anger. You know that you're allowed to be angry at someone for dying. It doesn't sound very kind, does it? But it's actually very normal and healthy. You got left behind. Anger is normal. And a healthy part of the grieving process. So I want to move it along also to, you know, getting bad news in life, you know? Oh, that's such a good one. Yeah, what about that is the idea that you're walking around and um, everything seems to be going fine and boom, you get hit with some bad news. Maybe it is a parent dying. Maybe it's some news about you. Maybe it's a news about a good friend of yours. Maybe it's about a young person. Maybe it's something to do with your job. You know, I think we we want to get that out there also. Open the discussion to that. Uh, Again, if you want to join us, I have any questions, 1-866-472-5792. But, you know, that does happen. The older you get, the more chance it's going to happen. Yeah, and I think that we really have to accept that bad news comes to all of us. Yes, yeah, we don't know what cards are going to be dealt to us, and there's there's this randomness to that. But there's a guarantee that we'll all get some bad cards. And and it's not really are you going to get them? It's what are you going to do? That's it. When these happen. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to go through some of the the first thing that like when I get get hit? With sure. Something? Sure. So my my first thing is. I give myself that period to just let it sit. Okay. Because you never know. What's yeah. the first thing you do if you get hit with one of those bad cards? What's your first thing? I think we're very similar because I know where I have to get to, but I allow myself the permission to feel sorry for myself at first. And I tell clients all the time, you can't stay in victim, but you certainly are allowed to go into a pity party. Yeah. I mean, you've gotten bad news. Why wouldn't you feel sorry for yourself? And I think that's a necessary step to not be a victim is to be a victim. That's a Sandraism. In order that. not to be a victim, you have to be a victim. And so you're you, allowed to and, feel sorry for yourself. And you have to make sure you go through the natural stages of being able to understand. And if you don't grieve it, it's just like if you, you can't forgive someone unless you can allow what they actually did to you to sink in, right? You have right. to validate that that that's hurt me and so feel true. that hurt you can move past it. Oh, that's, I like that segue. So they can use it even in like a marriage where there's a fight. Yes. So first you get to play the story of like, he did me wrong. He did this to me. He did that to me. It's so unfair. Okay. Um, You're allowed to do that, but then we're going to move on. So that period can last different amounts of times for people. Right. But we're saying it's okay to go into your victim story, whether it's actual victimization or perceived victimization, you're allowed to do that. But I do think we have to right away get it out here is that um, it's, you can't stay there, right? No, you can't stay. One of the things is that you want to be able to acknowledge it. If you, like a lot of people try when something bad happens that they're just going to become a machine, close everything off, box it off and just go on to the next step to that. That is not healthy. No. You're feeling something and now you're not acknowledging it. You're not actually then dealing with it. It's going to come out somewhere else. If you have bad news and you don't actually deal with it, it's going to come out somewhere else. You're going to yell at someone that didn't deserve it. You're going to drive too fast. You're not going to be paying attention. You want to make sure that you take care of your garden. It's like saying I'm in a garden, but I'm in a garden blind. Okay. It's not going to be a good garden. Okay. So we're going to take a short break, but we're going to come back and talk about after you go through that stage Mm. where you've indulged. You know, again, you cannot stay there. So how do you get out of it? Because some people get stuck right there. We'll be right back with Straight Talk with Sandra Rich. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. 
Spa Munari is a full-service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety. Featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. A fresh look at today's health. Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. So I was just thanking Georgia for this amazing topic because a lot of things are coming up, including a comment from our producer about survivor guilt that I, I'm, I'm guilt after someone dies if you didn't have a good relationship, which I'm going to get to. But first, I want to finish this idea that after you've gone into feeling sorry for yourself, that no one can tell you how long you can do that for. But what I can tell you, and I know you agree with this, Georgia, is you cannot stay there forever. You've right. gotten bad news. Yeah. You get bad news in life. If you stay stuck in that moment forever. That moment, that story defines your life. Now, how do you know for yourself when I need to start to pick myself back up? Because a lot of people kind of get stuck in that cycle because there's a lot of secondary gains, right? Yeah. You don't have to really be responsible for things. People yeah. take care of you. You get a certain amount of attention. attention it's kind yeah. of like your, your get out of jail free card. So how do you... No, when it's time to get up. I I think that's such a brilliant question, well stated, because it's true. It's breaking it down into steps. And the thing is, I think it really comes down to a choice. Hmm. Okay. So, you know, I remember hearing years ago by a famous psychologist, a story of, he told the story of a woman, it's a fictional story, a woman who comes home one day and her husband uh, announces he's not in love with her anymore. He's cheating on her. He's leaving her. Okay, and she's devastated. And he meets up with her 20 years later, and she says, well, you know, doctor, um, my life stopped 20 years ago. There was that one moment in time, and everything just stopped. Mm -hmm. And he gives the same story, but he tells a different version of it, where the woman, she's devastated, but she decides, like, you know what I want to build? I don't have any money. I'm going to go back to school. She finds herself a career. She starts to thrive. He runs into her 20 years later, and she says, you know, doctor, that moment my husband left me was the best moment in my life. I want to send him a thank you note, which is, sounds weird because I'm not saying if your husband leaves you, it's the best moment, but it really is very much something I subscribe to is turning your lemons into lemonade. So the choice that I talk about is this. Do you want to turn your lemons into lemonade or do you want the husband leaving the cancer diagnosis, the bad news about someone else, the affair to define your life? 
That's yeah. the choice you have to make. And I think that's very personal. And I think that if you want to still have a life, yes, the choice has to be that it's not going to define my life. So then there's another step that we have to move on to. Do you want me to tell you that? Yeah, please. Okay, then in my view, you have to find meaning in your pain. Oh, I like that. I like that. And so what do you mean by meaning in your pain? You know, everything that happens in your life can end up teaching you something mm. if you decide that you want it to. Right, right. I like this. And so, you know, Georgia, people don't come into our offices or go to couple retreats unless they're in pain. So pain produces some of the most extraordinary changes in people. I speak at a lot of um, conferences and I ask the audience, big audiences, think of the most painful moment in your life. I'm going to ask you the same question. And they think about it and I say, how many of you feel that most painful moment made you who you are? Mm. And I never see someone not put their hand up. Would you, in your life, did a painful moment have a big effect on something that you're very proud of in your personality? It's it's very interesting because I think that we've spoken a little bit about this before, about how... Um, you know, even even our anxiety is there to tell us something. We just have to listen to right. what that might be. And I think that a lot of why um, we're Sandra and I are, are heavily Type A personalities trying to achieve things. Really? And, and, I'm yeah, just kidding. Just a touch. <laughs> You're just a touch. Just a um, touch. And, uh, like, you know, the same thing for, like, why I had to be, like, a jiu-jitsu champion was because, like, I Twice. Did, I did. Canadian champion yeah, twice. Right. I'm proud. Right. But, thank you. But the reason that I did that was because of how much I was bullied and hurt. And I had to prove to myself that I wasn't weak and that I couldn't do things. Why I had to do well in school was because in the beginning of my school years, I struggled through my school years. And then I had to prove to myself that I wasn't stupid uh, because I had dyslexia and I didn't know. And so those pieces wow. made me who I was. And, like, I took them and I wanted to show exactly. that I could something different and that's exactly what you're talking about tonight. right so that's so um, beautiful it kind of wraps up if you've watched all the different shows they're all little pieces that fit really yeah, well together and it, I love it, that and I love what you're saying because I only met you later in life and you know anyone who knows you from my time period knows you as someone who you know I don't want to use the word fighter but like it's overachiever like you're just incredible at things you know you never do things like half you do things really really well and so to imagine that those painful moments of you know feeling like you you were having trouble in school or being beat up made you into the person who I think you were meant to become that's turning your pain into meaning so if you can do that if you can take a blow after you've had the pity party and say okay what am I supposed to learn here and what can I take from this You know, I've had people come into my office who their kids committed suicide. I mean, that is like, that's a hard one. It's a hard one one for a therapist to say, you know, like, you know, it's, 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 I can't think of a great flip statement, but not, it's really, really tough. No one wants to bury their children before them. But can you find meaning in your pain? Could you start a survivor's group? Could you help out other people in this situation? Um, There are stories. That's another thing I think is very helpful for people. There are stories on the internet and in books of people have come up, come over, overcome incredible adversities to become people who have changed this world. So maybe you were the chosen one. And uh, as I faced some adversities in my life, I did sometimes say, okay, well, this is part of my deal. Yes. And it helped me to grow into the person that I believe I am today. And I, I, what I next asked the audience is, would you change it if you could do it all over again? And most people would say no. Would you change the bullying and the uh, dysle- dyslexia? Dyslexia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have dyslexia. I'm not saying dyslexia. Um, no, I, I actually wouldn't. Okay, um, I, I'm not saying that I would take all of it or, or the uh, levels to it. I might no. have toned it down. May, you know, maybe don't you didn't need a rock to get the lesson. A pebble might have done it. Might have done it. Yeah. But I, I don't think that I would have had the same amount of empathy or care. I don't think that I would have been as good of a therapist. Right. Uh, if I didn't go through those things, good therapists and I, have suffered. I like who I am now, and so I would wonder if, if certain, you know, I'm not saying I had the the worst of lives. I really didn't. But if I hadn't have had those, maybe I would have become, um, you know, more obnoxious or judgmental you know, or harsh yeah. or cold or thoughtless, and I wouldn't like who I would be. To right, that. right. And so a lot of that became like inner learning for myself, and I think that that is important. Well, you it. bring up a good point. Is suffering pain allows people to be empathetic, you know, because I, at the couple retreat, there were many people asking, well, how can I feel empathy for her or for him? I can't relate to the problems. I said, I'll give you the therapist track. 
is we don't always relate to the problem. We relate to the feeling. Mm. So if you've had pain in your life and someone comes to you and says, I'm in pain, you don't need to judge the content of the story. You need to remember what does it feel like to feel in pain? Um, And then you can really empathize. So yes, I do think that great therapists have had to suffer pain or how would they do the job? And I think that is a very big part of why you're a great therapist. So actually, maybe you needed a rock. Maybe you say even though a pebble would have gone the job, maybe not. I yeah, I think that I think that you're right. So what what about you? What do you feel when when you have to go through adversity and you go through that process? How can you go through like what are your steps to be able to find the meaning to be able to get to that for someone that might be going through this? Well. The way I do it after, you know, finish feeling sorry for myself is, first of all, journaling really helps. Oh, I love I'm, I'm yes. meditation. Those kinds yes. of things are very helpful. But I look even for... Even if you hate writing. Yeah. It can be point form. It yeah. can be even art. Free association yeah, works for me. Yeah, whatever it might be. Yeah. But I look uh, for... The way I do it is simply... Um, what is, again, what is this here to teach me? So I try to connect the dots. So if even when I get a cold, I do it. If I get a really bad cold, mm-hmm. okay, and I'm knocked out. I really think sickness is your body's call for self. Mm. It's saying you're not taking care of yourself. I mean, yes, there's viruses, and sometimes you can just get a sickness. So not everything, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. But if I, I've gone through periods where I just get one cold and one flu after another, I feel that that's the universe, whatever you believe in, yeah. trying to get my attention. I didn't get, they didn't get my attention on the first cold, so they gave me another cold. Yeah. I still am run down. I go back to work too fast. I'm run down. I'm teaching people about self-care. I'm not doing my self-care. So I have to, because that's the thing about finding meaning in pain Mm. means taking responsibility. Beautiful. You need to look at how does this keep happening to you? You see, Georgia, and I know you agree and we love each other because of this, is that whatever bad thing is happening, there's usually something in it. Now, don't misunderstand me. You know, God forbid you walk down the street and you got raped. I'm not saying you're responsible for that. Please don't not read into that. But I'm talking about a lot of things in your life. There are things that if you take responsibility for it, actually gives you a locus of control. Yes. Uh, or And it could even be like for, for the death of my dad, I just learned that I really want to make sure that the memories and the people that are in my life, they're important and time is precious. And, and so it beautiful? can be simple to that. Beautiful, Georgia. Yeah. Say it again. Time is? Time is precious. Yeah. And you want to use your time wisely with what you choose to do. That's the most precious commodity you yeah. have. Okay, so we're, we're, we have about a minute before the break, but I'll open up the topic of what about, we're having a discussion with the producer about this, and many people talk about this. What about someone, you lose someone, and you didn't, you had a fight that morning. You know, yeah. I remember reading on, on 9-11 that there were wives who had fights with their husband that morning, and they're racked with guilt. Um, I would, I think I would tell them, you know, I'll let you expand on this. I would tell them not to feel guilty. Uh, but what about that? If you, had, you didn't have a good relationship and the person died, you know, yeah. what about that guilt? Is guilt, first of all, is guilt adaptive in this case? I, I think that guilt really kind of holds us back to that. Yeah. And, and I can understand how that is felt with, but it's, it's what do you do with that, right? Okay. And the steps to be able to be able to heal. Okay, so when we come back, can you go through some of those steps? Sure. Okay, so I just want to say on that that I think we also have to accept our humanity is mm-hmm. that that can happen any day of our lives. You have a mm-hmm. fight with someone and you could lose them. And I think that we have to comfort ourselves that it's the entirety of our relationships that matter, not the morning fight. Beautiful. We will be right back with Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health and Wellness. Change your life forever with the latest cutting edge products for home study treatment for anxiety, featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. 
Spa Munari is a full-service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. Your life, your health, your network. This is Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. Hi, so we're back and, you know, we don't have that much time, but there are a few things to talk about. Um, uh, You know, we finished up with guilt, but I want to, or we were talking about the steps with guilt, but I want to throw into the mix because we're running out of time. What, like I said, if the relationship, you had a fight, you need to forgive yourself, you know, you need to look at the entire relationship. But I felt remiss during the commercial break is what if it was a bad relationship and you had cut the person off and now you're kind of like, oh my God, they died. I never got... To make it right. Yeah. What What then? Yeah, that's a really difficult situation. I, I sometimes deal with people that have difficult relationships with people and they haven't healed and there's still a lot of hurt that comes through that. You don't actually need the other person in the relationship there. And that's mm-hmm. even if they're alive. Sometimes it's, they're, they're abusive or harsh or cruel. And we can go through the process of healing without the other person there. And that's even right. if they're alive. Because sometimes you cannot guarantee that they're going to be um, accepting to that. And it could make it even worse instead of feeling better. Absolutely. I, I think that one of the most important things, especially if you have a fight and you're you're not dealing with it or it's a difficult situation, is that if it was the other way around, would you want that person to feel guilty for the rest of oh, for you? That is fab. Say it again. <laughs> it would be that, I love you so much, um, <laughs> would be that if it was the inverse and you were the one that died, would you want that person to feel guilt for the rest of life for you? Okay, so that one is for someone someone out there that we were talking to on the break, so, and they wouldn't want you to feel they, guilty. They wouldn't, They you no. know, things so, are complex. Yeah. I, you know, I am not perfect. I might have some uh, friend that I haven't, you know, been able to rebond with and yeah. hurt each other. But I would not want them to feel guilty no. for the rest of the life. There was many good things. Sometimes there's bad. We've decided to go our separate ways. Yeah. But you want to carry the good to that. Guilt is something that is, it's, it stops the healing process. Yes, you it get does. stuck and it becomes something about you instead of about the things that you've learned in the journey that you've taken with this person in your life. Not everything has to end well to that. And you had said something that was really beautiful is that, you know, you don't want to constantly go through life saying, oh, I better like apologize or deal with this right away because something bad might happen. That's really letting fear control you. Yeah. It's like I see couples and yeah. they don't, they're, they don't want to have a boundary with their partner because, because what if their partner dies that day? Yeah. But the problem with that is that I can understand it would be devastating if you had a fight with a partner and they died that day. But the problem is if you don't put a boundary, then the relationship is already like it's going into a death. Beautiful. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's a problem. But cool. I, I really loved also 
yeah, so, uh, you know, we have to live true to ourselves because self-love is part of relationships, too. So if you hurt me, I can't because you possibly could die that day, say, like, forget it, you know. So it's it's a it's a, there's a fine line. And I loved what you were saying about guilt. And I want to highlight it that guilt in that way is non adaptive because guilt is only adaptive when I always say this, when you have to say sorry to someone. Yes. So Beautiful. if you lost a par- parent and you didn't see them as much as you would have liked to or the, the relationship wasn't good, first of all, it takes two to tango. Yes. But second of all, if you want, this is something that can be done with a therapist actually, is to work through, if you want to say, I, I this may sound weird and I don't necessarily believe in afterlife, so that's not what I'm saying. But I believe you can still have a relationship with someone who's not around. Now, I don't yes. mean afterlife stuff, even yeah. though as I said that's a whole other topic but I mean I would feel that I could do I could say sorry without the person being here and feel that there could be resolution and we know in psychotherapy that that we have an exercise we do with people called the empty chair where we know that the brain actually feels like the conversation happened yes as a really good idea to find a trained therapist to go through that because if you're still in regret and guilt towards someone you lost I promise you that is affecting every aspect of your life including your romantic relationships without a doubt Exactly. And you, yeah. you you get to go through that process of grieving and coming to a place where you can forgive yourself. Right. Because and forgive them. What if it was a very aggressive relationship or very hurtful relationship? Then you would go through that process of, of mourning not just the loss of this this person, but also the loss of not having the the partner that you'd wished for, the father that you'd wished for, the mother that you'd wished for. Indeed. And that process you can do all on your own to be able to get back to peace. In the end, this is about you. It is not about them. Yeah, that's so well stated. And I, I think that, you know, we've co- conquered on this show today two topics, really, when you think about it. It's like mm. losing someone yes. and facing bad news. And there's lots more to say. We might have to do more part two on this one. But I think that I want to clarify that the search for meaning is in bad news, Ooh, not like in that. losing someone. Because I, like I don't think I can find meaning in that. Although maybe uh, selfishly you could find meaning. Like what does it mean to lose a mother at a certain age? Like who am I as a result of that? But I don't know that you necessarily have to find meaning in the fact like it was meant to be that this person died. Because I just suddenly thought yeah. that that could be unclear to people. Right. And Very that might be point. a little weird. Uh, it's finding meaning on the challenges of your life. And, you know, this comes back to the number one topic resilience and very briefly you know we just did a show on on resilience a couple weeks ago with a a top expert in the world on resilience it was a great show Uh, you can check it on straighttalksandareach.com and resilience is a hot topic these days it's an important quality for children and adults to have and what is that it's the ability to deal with bad things happening and rise above them last word goes to you on that georgia Oh, I, I, I love that statement, by the way, Sandra. I think that that's really beautiful. And to know that your character is shown not when things are going well, that your character is shown when things are difficult. And that's when, and that does not mean that you want to invalidate your hurt and your pain and to be able to cry and be sad to it, but then also that you fall down so you can learn to get back up. Yeah, so beautifully said. So, you know, I think before I, you know, say my official thank you for coming back on and suggesting this topic, um, you've had a challenging year. I've had a challenging year. What is your takeaway from your year? And your where have you found meaning in your pain? You did mention time being precious as being one of them. Yeah. Uh, does that mean you're sort of making sure that your relationships, that you spend time with the people you love, is that how it's manifesting? I, I'm trying to find more like work-life balance and making sure that, Um, people always say, well, I will when, I will when, I'll do it then. And that might not happen. And so I want to make sure that I enjoy my time. I don't, people often like save up for a rainy day. I want to be able to also enjoy while I have the health and wellness to be able to do that. Laugh, enjoy, have people and, and balance. What about for you, Sandra? Well, it's very similar. I have to tell you, as this year is almost like we're like yeah. really close friends. We're really close friends. Like it's been something strange there. Life work balance is huge, yeah. and uh, making sure I always check is this because you know work is work and pleasure is pleasure. They're different, but work can be very meaningful and pleasurable or tedious. Right. And I think that you know what. We all want to make a living, but I think that if you find meaning in your work, you will make a living. There you absolutely you'll you'll live your dreams and you know, that's what it's all about and 
taking the time with good friends like this moment right here. So thank you so much, Georgia, for coming back on Straight Talk. You're, is, you've really been such a big part of the Straight Talk uh, journey. And we're not ending, by the way. That sounds like we're ending. Um, I mean, we're ending for today. Oh, sorry. Now it's turning into Seinfeld. Um, <laughs> Um, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for waking up in the middle of the night with this great topic and joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you, Sandra. That is all the time we have left today. I want to thank again Spominary, uh, www.spominary.com. Call them, get a massage, get a facial, 15% off if you mention Straight Talk. And of course, I'd like to thank all of you for listening to Straight Talk week after week across the world, actually. Sweden, Japan, the States, Canada. We really appreciate it. I'd like to invite you all to come back next week. If you're interested in our retreats, therapy, or anything else that was mentioned on this show or previous shows, check out Help for Anxiety Depression. Com. And also, if you go on straighttalksandareach.com and put forward slash radio gifts, you get a whole bunch of free gifts. There's no catch, none. Check out my Facebook page as well, Straight Talk with Sandra Reach. Feel free to leave a question or a comment for Georgia, myself, and don't forget to like the page. Remember, you can hear this and any prior show as a podcast on my website, straighttalksandareach.com, on the podcast app of your iPhone, on, on iTunes under Straight Talk with Sandra Reach. Drop me a comment or question anytime at info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Um, I should mention also, if you're interested in our anxiety video series, uh, we have tapes on all sorts of things, anxiety, depression, sleep, uh, boundaries and consequences. Go to anxiety-videos.com. My name is Sandra Reish, and I promise I'll help you learn to live your best life again next Thursday, same time, same channel. In the meanwhile, this is Straight Talk with Sandra Reish. Keep your eyes on the stars. Thank you for listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reish. We hope you've enjoyed today's show and will tune in again next Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Now, go live your best life.